It looks like Ken Golden has taken a break from burning 86 flare pack wrappers. Golden Company has entered into the grading space. Let's dig in. To all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles, friends, back again, another day, another card video. How is everybody doing? It's a beautiful day out there. I feel pretty good, too. <laughs> I think I finally got some sleep. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I just, um, I don't know why, I just feel pretty good. <laughs> Let's get it going. Let's get some positive vibes going. If you're new here and you're looking for pretty much daily card content, collectibles content, you have come to the right place. Don't forget to hit... For het, don't forget to hit the big red button down below the subscribe button. And if you like what you hear, the like button, it helps us to spider these videos out to the sports card masses. Also, don't forget to connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad. And I'm also on the Twitter machine, the Sports Card Dad. Special thanks to channel partner ComC.com. It's your home for buying, selling, and flipping all the hottest trading cards. Over 29 million cards across all sports, genres, and eras. With a ComC .com account, you can purchase cards from different sellers over time and ship them home together later or immediately reprice them for sale on the ComC marketplace. Don't forget to check out ComC.com today. All right, I was doing some scrolling last night and I came upon a post and I, I can't find it now. And I wonder, so it had Bill Clinton in the kind of in the meme. There was a meme attached to it and there was reference to golden grading. And I was like, huh, Sounds interesting. So I, I went there. I went to golden.co slash grading. And indeed, there is some, some grading information here. Look, maybe this is something that's been around and I completely missed it, but I have not heard of this. So essentially what this is saying is, is that through Golden, you can grade your cards through PSA. Not any of the other companies, but is that really a shock, though, as both Golden and PSA are under the collector's umbrella, the empire, if you will. And so it looks like the way that this works is it's two weeks or less is what they're advertising, two weeks or less. I don't see anything about values or anything, but it says no upfront fees. It doesn't say anything about declared value. I assume it's probably exactly what PSA's rules are. It's just that you can do it through Golden without any upfront fees. So whether that's a $20 card or a million dollar card, the all the upcharges and things that PSA would do is still going to hold true. It's just that you're not paying for that upfront. Essentially, Golden would pay that up front. And then on the back end, if you sell it through Golden, you pay it back that way. There wasn't a lot of details that I could find. And again, maybe I missed it, but that looks to be the way that it is. It looks to be in a similar fashion to like what PWCC has set up with Beckett or with um, CSG. For certain cards, you can pay a fee. It goes to the grading company. It comes back. You can sell it through the weekly auction or the monthly auction or whatever on PWCC. This looks to be similar, um, but it's, it's with PSA. The two weeks or less grading caught my attention though. That's, that's quick. That is very quick grading and it didn't, didn't specify on, you know, size of the card or whatever. It just says two weeks or less. So I guess that would be a benefit of you working kind of within the collector's umbrella of companies. They're golden. They're part of it as well as PSA. They're all a part of that same group. And so you get a benefit from that. Golden handles everything start to finish and there you go. And again, it's the control of the inventory. We've talked about the vault system. Yesterday's video really kind of went through the vaults. And this is, again, is the grading companies are huge with, with more and more raw cards moving to grading. Yes, you do have the dollar card, the $5 card, the $10 card, you know, but really a lot of cards are going to grading. They're grading millions of slabs these days between kind of the big four grading companies, far and away more than they've done in the past. So this segment of the hobby, grading, third-party grading, has massively grown over the next few years. Will that continue on? That's something that will be a question mark that we will have to see. But this is kind of a, a service. I'm surprised that if it is a new service, I'm surprised it wasn't rolled out earlier. It makes sense. And maybe it wasn't rolled out earlier because of the PSA backlog. Now PSA's backlog is really getting dwindled down to nothing. And so they're like, yeah, absolutely. Roll this thing out. Two weeks or less grading, no problem. We've got it. But that could just be another sign that PSA is really kind of rolling and they can handle that volume. I want to talk a little bit to shift gears a little bit to sentiment 
within hobby companies? Because this is something I've been thinking about. I do, anytime I do a video on a company, yesterday it was about vault companies. It's yesterday a little about the Beckett vault, the alt vault. First off, viewership just isn't there in the same way that it is for other videos. But then also the comment section on those videos is always far more negative than, than other videos that I do. And meaning about those particular companies. I'm not interested in using a vault. Oh, they're scammers. I don't like this or that or whatever. Now, granted, there is a lot of scammy stuff in the hobby for sure, but there's also, I would say, solid companies within the hobby that are doing kind of good work. You might have had a bad experience here or there. No company is perfect. That's why every company has a customer service department. I mean, there's going to, every single company has got stuff that goes wrong. So no doubt, but I feel like sentiment for hobby companies is just, it just feels like not great at all right now. And I was thinking about that because a lot of kind of the hobby personalities, the hobby companies, the big time companies, they really operate on the higher end. Um, a lot of it, a lot of it is high end stuff. And it just feels like there's kind of a separation between the average collector slash speculator slash investor and the folks that are really kind of working at these hobby companies and, and the stuff they collect, frankly, a lot of the stuff they collect. It's like, they don't bet. They don't even bother with it. If it's not $10,000 or more, $50,000 or more, if it's not a PMG or if it's not something like crazy. And let's be honest. I mean, 95% of the people that collect cards, they don't give a crap about this show. They don't, they don't know who I am. They don't give a crap about half of these people. They haven't, they don't, they're not on YouTube. It's, it's not even a thing for them. The fact there's a lot of people that just don't even realize that there's sports card content on social media or on YouTube. And I know that because there's people that are like, Hey, that reach out are like, Hey, found your channel a week ago, or I just got back in a couple weeks ago, or, you know, Oh, I didn't realize that, that this was a thing. So and I think that maybe once they do kind of tune in and they look at like, okay, who are the personalities? There is a lot of, you know, posturing and, you know, and I think that that's part of kind of what the hobby was anyway, where it's like, oh, we're, we're kind of, you know, we're showing off cards. We're proud of our cards. But man, now like on the higher end, we just, you know, a, a card just sold for $12.6 million. There's such a disparity between that market and the majority of the people that are in this, you know, so it's probably cool to see. I like seeing stuff like that. I like seeing other people's collections, especially high end stuff. I think that that's cool. It's kind of like, you know, Jay Leno's garage where he's got million dollar sports cars in there. Will I ever own one? No, but it's cool to kind of see what he's got. Like what's the story behind it. So I understand the allure to it, but most of the hobby attention goes to that stuff and less of it is on kind of the, the random cards. And maybe because it's just, you know, these are more common. Maybe it's considered boring. I don't know why that is, but there it just seems like there is a disconnect between a lot of the hobby companies that are operating and really the customers. It just feels like it and it's widening. You know, maybe it's just because of all the money that's coming in. Boxes are so expensive. Singles are so expensive. Everything's so expensive. It's become a rich man slash women's game. So I think if there are hobby companies that can really tune in to the average collector that's maybe spending a hundred dollars a month or fifty dollars a month on cards as opposed to and, and just getting those people in volume and really getting them you know excited about that particular company that particular product it's kind of like you know and this could, this could be very debatable but it's like if I'm sitting down with like an Elon Musk the guy's got more money than anyone on earth I think I could actually have a conversation with Elon Musk about a variety of different topics could I sit down with Jeff Bezos and do that? I don't think I could. I don't know. I think he's just too, he's too corporate now. If you go back to like 1999, Jeff Bezos and watch some of his interviews when Amazon was still kind of in its infancy, the guy was still a millionaire, but he was still very, very, I mean, there was a, a lot of humble pie there. Now it's evolved to where, you know, it's, it's just, it feels different. Now, granted, I don't know Jeff Bezos. Maybe he's a really laid back dude, but to me, it's just, would I rather kind of talk with Elon Musk about random life stuff or Jeff Bezos? It'd be Elon Musk all day long. And so, again, I think that you can be a billionaire, millionaire, whatever, and still relate to regular folks. And that's something that when I look at just like a lot of the, the hobby companies slash personalities, that's something I feel like could be improved on. But look, I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing it. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.